Learning objectives include how antibodies are used as a defense mechanism by the body against various microbes. Basically, there are five different ways that the antibodies can act as a defense. We would see that one of the mechanism is agglutination of the antigen or bacteria or viruses. Second is called opsonization. Third is through complement activation. Fourth is antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. And the last one is neutralization. This is what agglutination means. That the an one antibody molecule has two fab portions that it can bind two antigenic epitopes. And as you can see, as a result, these two bacteria, they clump together. And then, as you can see, if you increase the number of antibodies, they would um, clump or bind more such cells. And this clumping is called agglutination. By definition, it's called agglutination. When these different uh, bacteria, they are bound by antibodies. These antibodies, they have a property, FC part of the antibodies have a property that they can bind to macrophages. And then when this antibody molecule would bind to a macrophage, the whole complex, the whole uh, agglutinated mass would be taken up by the macrophage. So in other words, um, it is easy for the macrophage to eat all these cells together as a clump rather than eating individually, which would, which would take more time and would not be very effective. So this is how one of the mechanisms that antibodies help uh, the macrophages clear the antigen from the body. A second mechanism is called opsonization. Opsonization basically means that the, as you can see, there's a single organism which is bound all over the surface by antibodies. And opsonization also helps these phagocytic cells like a macrophage to eat that antigen when it binds the antibodies. And as I mentioned that the antibody molecule, the FC part, has receptors uh, that are located on the macrophages or the cells, phagocytic cell, and it is easy for them to take in the antigen and destroy it. Third way or third mechanism uh, for clearing the antigen is by complement activation. As you can see here, there are two antibody molecules that are bound to the bacterium. When two antibody molecules are bound in such a way, they can activate complement proteins. Complement proteins, as we saw in the innate immunity, uh, these are a group of 20 or more uh, proteins that get activated by antibodies. There are other mechanisms also, but one of them is through antibodies, which is called a classical complement activation pathway. And as a result, this complement would, would punch a hole into the bacterial cell, releasing the content of the bacteria. So when the cells ruptures, it gets lysed. So it is destroyed. This is, this is the third mechanism by which antibodies can destroy the antigen. The fourth mechanism is called antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. If the antigen or the agent, infectious agent, is a large molecule or is a large structure like a worm, a parasite in the, in the blood or in the body, Eosinophils, they can bind through the antibodies. I mean, so antibody first would bind to the surface of the cell or the, the agent or infectious agent like a worm. And then this antibody would bind through their receptor onto an eosinophil. And eosinophil would induce some protein molecules that would punch a hole into a larger cell like a worm and would cause the lysis of the worm. So this phenomenon is mediated by antibody binding first, and that is the reason it is called antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. So antibody triggers 
that cytotoxicity that ends in the destruction of the whole worm. The last one is called neutralization. The antigen can bind antibodies, or in other words, antibodies can bind an antigen all over. So suppose if this is a bacterium, or this could be a virus, or it could be a toxin, for example, tetanus toxin. So tetan toxin, like here, as you can see, when the toxin is bound all over by the antibody molecules, this toxin would not bind to the target receptor in the body. And so antibodies can neutralize the effect of toxins, can neutralize the surface of the antigen with which the, the bacterium or the virus would bind onto the cells, body cells, and enter into the cells for causing the infection. So, in other words, antibodies can mask or can cover the antigen or bacterium or toxin so that it does not bind to the target in the body. So, in summary, antibodies can help the body in five different ways to clear or destroy the antigen.